Hi, it's Joe here from Joe's Country Junction, and I'm here in my sewing room to welcome you to sew along with me today. Um, already, it sounds like the dogs are acting up. Um, they do that. Uh, I've had a very good day. I am filming this on Saturday, June, I'm not even sure the date, maybe 24th. I'm just taking a wild guess. Um, I'm happy to be here. I have a weekend that is free from any obligations. I don't have any graduation parties. I don't have any weddings. Um, I don't have any grandkids. I don't have anything going on. So I am like celebrating here in my sewing room. Trust me, I love all of those things. I love to see family. I love my grandkids. But boy, I sure do love some me time too. And I'm sure you all can relate that you love me time as well. I'm super happy. Um, I've just been... Um, sewing away. My dog Izzy is over here with the squeaky toy. So if you hear her, that's what that is. If you hear a little squeaky toy in the background. And I guess I'd rather hear a squeaky toy than a barking dog, right? Yeah, I sure think so. So we have good news today. Um, as many as you know, as many of you know, I can't, I'm talking too fast, so I can't even say my words. Um, one, Iowa has been in a very big shortage of rain. We're in a drought. The corn is, um, we're an agriculture state. So the corn is curling up, which that means that it is starving for water. And, um, we are supposed to get rain today. And we've had a couple of periods of shots of rain and we're actually in a tornado watch. And as scary as that can sound for some people, um, if it brings rain, we don't really care. Um, well, of course, we don't want anyone to be hurt or injured, but oftentimes when we do get tornadoes in Iowa, they go in a rural area, not in a city area. And just watch, as I say that, I'm probably going to get wiped out tonight. But um, I'm, I'm going to go with that we won't, and I'm going to go with that hopefully we'll get a bunch of rain. Um, that would be just be excellent and wonderful. This is my new camera. Oh, what do you think? Um, if you like it, please for sure give me a thumbs up. It was an expensive camera. Um, I think, I don't know. I think it was like $700 for the camera. I don't buy that kind of stuff. That is very frivolous to me. But I was so frustrated with how my phone was filming that I ended up um, getting the new camera. And I will try to remember to put a link for it down below. And if I forget to put a link, just um, shoot me a, a message. I always read the comments. I always comment back to everyone. I love reading your comments, so comment and say, hey, Joe, you forgot the link. Um, you told me you probably would, and that would be, yeah, that would be me. I probably will forget the link, but I'm going to try to remember, and I guess trying is all I can do at this point. Um, let me think. I think I should tell you a little bit of what I've been up to. Oh, other good news today. Freddie, my foster dog, as many of you know, I um, do care for foster dogs. Um, I am a volunteer with Heart Animal Rescue and uh, my dog Jerry who was a no sorry it wasn't Jerry Jerry was my previous dog Freddie Freddie's the one that got adopted today and Freddie was a labradoodle but he was a small one he was just a, just the cutest guy I really loved him he was a fun guy um, and Fiona got adopted earlier this week so I am free from foster dogs. I do, however, have my daughter's dog here. She is off to see the Taylor Swift concert in Minneapolis, and so I got her dog. So what else I've been up to this week? I've had a lot of grandkids, so that's why I'm especially celebrating this weekend with, with no involvement with anybody. Um, somebody said, oh, do you have big plans for this weekend? And I said, no, zero, and I couldn't be happier. And that's the truth. <laughs> so uh, I was thrifting this week, and I want to show you uh, one of the little pieces I bought. I'm just a sucker for anything that's sewing related. So I got this little um, this little treasure. Um, it has little drawers like this. Um, lots of the drawers are labeled, like one says thread. Um, this one says pins, buttons, thread, snaps, needles, and this is a utility one, and this is utility one. And so I, I bought it. It was only $3. My thrift store is pretty cheap. It was $3, so I bought it with the hope that um, I'll find some place in the sewing room for it. I love wooden things, and I love sewing-related things. Um, I love vintage things. Anything that um, is reminiscent of 
uh, sewing and me being a kid because I did sew when I was a kid. I had a great mom. She taught me how to sew early on. And I absolutely am so thankful for the blessing that she was in my life that she taught me how to sew. Um, earlier this week, I was writing blog posts, and um, some of you don't know, but I have a blog. It's uh, joescountryjunction.com, and I have two blog posts a day. Um, I have a big charity quilting network that I do, so some of the quilts are, are about, some of the blog posts are about that, and some of the blog posts are just like books I've read, projects I'm working on, um, cross stitch, quilting, anything like that. And so I was busy trying to get some blog posts written ahead because I'm going to a cross stitch retreat pretty soon and I'll be gone during those days and I want to make sure that there's some content for the readers even though I'm gone. Um, if you hear some heavy panting down below, that is my, my daughter's dog. I don't know. She's a pretty panty dog. But anyway, that was a whole sidetrack. I'm a squirrel girl, so I find lots of squirrels in my life and I squirrel off onto different topics. But I was um, writing a blog post, and I was going to do an update on my UFOs, which I got that written. I do a UFO uh, challenge with Country Threads. Uh, it'd be chickenscratch.com uh, is the, the blog post that I do that with. So you make a list of 12 projects, and then um, every month they pull a project number. So you make a list of 12 projects. Every month they pull a number and then you're supposed to work on that project. That's how it's supposed to be, but I kind of just do it very loosely. I don't always work on the project that they tell me to, and I don't only list 12 things. This year I think I had 25 things on my list. So I have 25 US UFOs here in my sewing room, and to be honest, I have more than that. Um, maybe not big time UFOs beyond that, but I'm sure if I scrapped around and looked around, I could find a few more. What happens is a lot of times um, people send me their uh, leftovers or people send me their projects that they're no longer interested in, and um, I finish them. I just I love doing that. Uh, the quilts are like something for nothing quilts. Oftentimes, well, most of those I donate to a fund or a cause or something that helps someone in need or a project in need that um, I feel passionate about. So for instance, there's a project or there's a benefit coming up in August and that benefit helps people whose children, well, or families who are going through a hard time and it provides, uh, oh, like small amounts of money, like up to a thousand dollars or so for the family if their loved one is in the hospital. Where we live right here, it's at least two hours for any major, it's, it's two hours to any major hospital. So for instance, when I had my thyroid cancer, I was going to Rochester all the time. And when my husband had um, lung cancer, we were going to La Crosse all the time. When my grandson had a lot of medical issues going on, they were in Iowa City. And so any of those places are about two hours from my house. So it costs a lot of money for gas. It costs a lot of money to go out to eat because you're pretty much guaranteed to have to go out to eat if you um, visit a place like that. And so those small grants um, are just great for families who have a need and a reason to have to be going to hospital stays and things like that. So people just apply for a grant or somebody nominates them for a grant and then money is sent to them. And it's usually $1,000 or less, but that $1,000 is super helpful because I know anybody in a crisis, um, money, you know, $500 is great because you had to miss work and um, it helped pay for some groceries or something. So I'm very impressed with that organization and friends of ours run that. And so I always donate um, a quilt for their benefit. They have a big silent auction and my quilts are always go on the silent auction. So to make... A longer story even longer <laughs> I um, ended up when I was going through making my UFO list for the country threads thing I came across a project that I thought you know maybe you could finish that up pretty quick and that could be the project that you donate for the benefit and um, the project came from my daughter Kayla she had started it but she decided not to finish the project and I'm grabbing that here and it was um, an American Jane pattern 
now this is what it looks like. I believe it's called Tea Party Quilt. It's a really cute quilt. Um, here they show pink as the accent color, but in her quilt she showed, uh, she used a uh, light blue as the color. I had it hanging up behind me, but the dogs um, have knocked it down. So I'm going to grab it. And um, I ended up sewing the top together, and here it is. I don't know how well the lighting is that you can see it. And showing quilts on any kind of video thing is really hard. So this is how it looks. Um, please go visit my blog. There'll be pictures of it there. Uh, when I started on it yesterday afternoon, uh, first off, let me let me backtrack a little bit. The quilt is made up of nine patch blocks. And so um, I don't want to give the pattern away, but I think you can see here. Um, you're going to have to pardon my hands because I was um, gardening this morning and um, my fingernails are not clean. So this is the, the blocks you need. You need some of these and some of these. Um, you need eight just regular nine patches and then you need um, half square triangle blocks. Um, you need 92 of these. Well, Kayla had all of the pieces that were cut into, or I mean, I'm sorry, they were sewn into three units. There's three pieces in the units. So I had to sew the rest of those together and um, I picked it up. I thought, well, this is going to be certainly an easy project. And then, well, she had it in a shoe box. And in the bottom of the shoe box were a whole bunch of like melted chocolate chips. I don't know if she was like having a snack while she was um, sewing or what happened, but there was some melted chocolate chips in there. So there are a few blocks that have an issue um, because some of the chocolate melted. Let me see if I can find one. Oh, here's one. You can see there's like a little smidgen of discoloration right here. I don't know. I hope I hope you can see that. Anyway, there's a there's a small amount of discoloration in a few of the blocks. Uh, now I lost where that one went. Um, oh, right over here, right here, right here. So there's some discoloration in the blocks just a little bit, and I tried to figure out what to do with that because I needed every single piece. The quilt is a jelly roll. It says it's jelly roll friendly, but when they say jelly roll friendly, it, it truly means it uses every bit and piece of, of the jelly roll. And so I was like, oh, okay, maybe I could replace this piece, but okay, I can't replace that piece. So I just ended up sewing them into the quilt because I didn't know what else to do. And I didn't want to waste all of that. So in the end, I decided that I just sew the top together and I would even quilt the top. And then after that, I would wash it. And after I'm done washing it, my plan was that I would check it out and see what I thought. And if the stains all were removed, then I would donate it. And if the stains aren't removed, I'm just going to keep it around here as a blanket for the kids at nap time because I could use another blanket like that as well. So it's not, uh, I'm sorry, another quilt like that as well. Uh, it's not gonna be, oh, oh, excuse me, now I got the hiccups. Oh, I swear I get on video and crazy things happen. So I, it's not gonna be a waste of fabric either way and um, I, it's gonna be a project that ends up getting done. Um, I don't have any plans soon to put it on the long arm because the benefit isn't until the end of August. I'd like to get it done, certainly, but um, now I'm a little bit nervous about ironing the top. Uh, if you've watched me for a while, you know that I am not big on ironing my blocks as I sew, and I didn't iron the blocks while I sewed purposely because I don't want to set that chocolate into the fabric. I don't know if it already kind of melted. Was it already set? Do I want to iron that? I'm just kind of unsure of what to do with that. So right now it's just a quilt top and it's not ironed and I'm going to think about that tomorrow. And um, I know that sounds very gone with the wind but um, and very Scarlett O'Hara, but I am going to think about it tomorrow. And hopefully um, when I do think about it, I'm going to have your comments to read through and your suggestions. So please leave me a comment 
what would you do if you had some what I'm suspecting are chocolate stains on the quilt blocks and how you would proceed from the quilt from here because right now it's all sewn together and um, there was one spot that was really bad you can see the discoloration here this is like a super bad spot. There's only one that was bad like that, but there were truly no other scraps of fabric. And I dug and dug through my own fabric to try to find, um, to see if I had some scraps that would work with it. And I just had nothing that was this shade that didn't scream out at me. So that's where it is. It's a top. Um, it'll go on the long arm here eventually, but for now it's, just a top and I'm going to be comfortable with that. And did you just hear the thunder? Oh, I'm so excited. I hope it rains. Oh, I hope, hope it rains. I am going to be sewing today while I talk to you. I already ate up a whole bunch of time. Um, I can't even see because uh, it doesn't let me see with the time very well on this new camera. I can't see it from a distance because uh, my eyes are crap and the camera is too far away. So it happens. <laughs> So what I'm working on is a Bonnie Hunter's quilt Oregon or bust. This is the quilt. The quilt can be found in this book. I'll try to remember to put a link for that below. And if I don't, again, remind me and I will try to get to that. But I do have um, this quilt in mind. I, and everybody's going to ask. They always do. I have a spiral binding in mind. I took mine to the local copy store, office supply store, and they have a machine thing that does that and you can just have the binding done. I think it costs me five or six dollars. So anyway, I'm making this quilt, but there, maybe that will show you a little better. If I get too close, it kind of um, darkens out, but if I show it back here. So this is the quilt, but I am making this the way that um, Mary from Country Threads made hers. And she made it in a blue and orange color palette. I don't know if this is gonna show up very well for you. So it's made out of, she made hers out of men's shirts and she used a blue and orange color palette. And maybe you can see here. I don't know if you can or not. I'll try to put a link to better pictures as well. And um, I'm super excited about it. I've already started making some of the blocks. I have a few over here that are made but not ironed. I have a few more in another pile over there that are made and ironed. I have a few um, here that are started. And uh, I guess I thought I'd just take you on an adventure with me and we'd chat about um, while I quilt and you can work on whatever project you have. I've also been working kind of on the side on this border. Uh, the original quilt that Bonnie Hunter did does not have this border in it, but the quilt that Mary from Country Threads did does have this. So I am going with it and I am going to um, add the border like, like Mary did. So in between other things I've been doing, I've been um, piecing this border. Um, it's gonna take forever. It's based on inch and a half squares, so it really takes a long time to sew it. I've got some pieces over here that when I want to run something through, I've kind of been using it as a leader and ender, but I'm excited to get going on this. Uh, my goal is by the end of the weekend to have all of the blocks done and maybe even starting to put it together. That's kind of an ambitious goal, but um, we'll see. I've got a couple hours here now and I have a little bit of time tomorrow so hopefully fingers crossed I can at least kind of get it started because right now I haven't even like counted out the setting blocks or the setting triangles I haven't counted out the sashing to do any of that and so I'm just hoping maybe I can get a little bit more organized here and um, get this project moving along so here we go I'm hearing a little bit of thunder in the background and that sounds awesome to me. I'm really hoping that we can get some rain. I do my best I can to sew a uh, leader and ender style and that means that there's always something under the needle. I have like little pieces of scraps and stuff that I'm using over here. Um, I guess they're not really scraps. I guess they're part of the units 
for the making the quilt block. Boy, my daughter's dog is just panting and panting and I don't really know why there's nothing to be, I mean, it's not cold in my sewing room by any means, but it's not um, weather that I think you need to pant through. So I don't know, maybe she's just nervous about the storm. son earlier today and we are both weather watchers so he was like are you on a tornado watch and I said yeah and he said well I'm on a tornado watch so we kind of watch out for each other we're about two we live about two hours apart as well so we kind of keep up with what's happening with the other okay I'm starting to get these sewed into um three pieces or strips so now this is acting like a nine patch when I'm putting it together. I made mine out of uh, shirt fabric. If you're unfamiliar with doing that um, I hit up local thrift stores and I buy shirts and I make the quilts out of shirts. I know that that's kind of an odd concept for some people, but uh, in my area, when I first started doing that, shirts were only like, I could get a bag of shirts for $2, and it was really easy to find 100% cotton shirts. So I saw Bonnie Hunter's quilt book, um, Shirts and Scrap Tails, or Scraps and Shirt Tails, Shirts, Scraps and Shirt Tails, I think it is. And then she came out with a second book, and... I kind of thought, well, this is a fun idea. And for me, the uh, shirts are really inexpensive. So I started making a few quilts that were made from shirts. And I found out that I absolutely love them. Those quilts become the favorite of everyone in the family. And the reason why is the shirts have been washed and laundered many times. And so the fabric is super soft. And if you have a quilt that you've had for a long time and you've washed it many times, you'll know that the fabric gets softer and softer as you go. And um, the quilts, when you make them from shirts, immediately feel that way. They feel nice and soft like you've had them for years and years and years. So I became addicted to making uh, quilts from shirts. It's just one of my favorite things to do. And so this was shirt. Uh, Mary from Country Threads made hers from shirts and um, the original pattern was made from shirts so I was just super excited to be making this from shirts as well. And so here's our first block done. Um, they're kind of a fun, the stripes and plaids look so fun together, I think. And I'll add that to my pile. I'll iron those all some other time. Um, I'm not always in a hurry to iron. If you've watched me before, a lot of times I'll save a project like that for when my grandkids are here. And I'll iron them downstairs when the grandkids are napping. But being I have a whole day off today and tomorrow from grandkids, I might just get a chance to iron them before they even come. Because I do want to get going on this quilt. Yeah. Oh. The dogs are being testy. By the time 4th of July rolls around, I'd really love for this quilt to be a top. It's just getting time. This quilt has been on my UFO bucket list for a long, long time. Uh, from the moment I saw Mary at Country Threads make her version of it, I was all about wanting to make this quilt. And so I started collecting shirts for it. And I say that because it's not very easy to find orange shirts. Orange is an unusual shirt color for men. And so being the quilt was made with blue and orange shirts, I needed to hunt down to try to find blue and orange. 
I've told you before that I use these a lot in my sewing room as little containers for the projects that I'm working on. That I'm using them yet again today. Um, this one is a uh, uh, eclair, frozen eclair box. Oftentimes I use uh, dishwasher pod boxes as well. Uh, the thunder is really rumbling outside. I'm hoping for rain. Fingers crossed, people. Sometimes uh, if you don't live in agriculture state, you don't realize how important rain is. Um, so here in Iowa, if we don't get rain, corn price goes up if, because we won't get as good a crop from the corn. And if the, if the corn price goes up, that means the meat price goes up. And if the meat price goes up, that means it's going to cost you more for your steak at the barbecue. And so I think we all need to hope for some rain. My poor garden really needs rain. I have, however, uh, harvested a few tomatoes in my garden already. Typically... I don't get tomatoes till mid-July, but this year on my back porch, I planted two cherry tomatoes, and I happened to be able to get a couple extra big plants. Just this year, our school FFA got a greenhouse, and it's their first year having a greenhouse, and they started tomato plants, and I went to the sale when they had it and I was able to get a few tomato plants and the tomato plants were about twice as big as the plants I normally get from the nursery are. So I planted those and they have already given me some cherry tomatoes which is awesome. I'm a huge tomato fan. I love all things tomato. I love salsa. Oh I take that back. I don't love ketchup. But otherwise, I love Bloody Marys, I love uh, lasagna, I love spaghetti, I love um, salsa. If it's tomato-based, I'll like eat it. When I was a kid, I always thought my mom was just so amazing because she would go out to the garden and she would pick a tomato from the garden. And then she would just stand there and eat it like an apple. And the amazing thing is I am now 57 years old. And I look forward to going out to the garden and picking a tomato and eating it like an apple. And it, it's a thing in our family. Because I was talking to my brother and he does that too. He's a real tomato lover as well. And... Most of my siblings all grow up. Okay, I'm going to run one of these through here. So this is my border pieces. I've got a few pieces over here, and I just run one through now and then to kind of end a series or a segment. If you notice, I don't pin very much. I'm not too picky about pinning. I've been sewing long enough that um, I don't like to take the time to pin. I just flip the seam. I'm not super picky. Um, my seams match 95% of the time, and I don't pin. So we have another block done. Yahoo! And another block done. So I don't know how long we've been quilting here, but um, I chatted for a long time, and now we have three blocks done, and that's awesome to know. I'm super excited about that. The more I can get done, the happier girl I am. For these two, I have to make the little nine patch block first that goes in the center of the block. Okay, I'm going to put that back over there. I've got two blocks that are very similar coming up here, and I'm working on them next. They both have the same orange fabric, but they have a slightly different blue fabric. Mary at Country Threads made her 
version of this quilt, she uh, made hers smaller. So every time I look at Mary's, I keep thinking to myself, no, I have to make it. I want to make it bigger. I'm super into making quilts that are at least single bed size, if not full bed or queen. Queen is my favorite, something around 90 inches, something below 100 inches. I have a 10 foot long arm behind me and I can, I'm really not supposed to have a quilt that's 100 by 100, but I can get a quilt that's 100 by 100 on the frame and so I like them to be under that, but over 90. This one probably won't be quite that big, but it'll be, I believe, over 80, and that's plenty big enough. This one has been sitting in my UFO pile for a long, long time, and one of the reasons for that is because I do a lot of charity sewing, and for charity sewing, I'm going to give the project whatever it is away. The dogs quit it, Izzy. Um, I'm going to give the project away, so I don't mind if it's as much what the fabric is or whatever it is, but I knew immediately when I decided to make this quilt that I would have trouble giving it away. Well, I could give it to my grandson, and, and I just might if, if he sees it and wants it. This might be a good quilt for him, but... I don't want to give this one away to just anybody because, for, like I said earlier, I just love uh, quilts made from shirts. So I knew this one was going to stay in the family. So then there's a smaller priority to actually get it done because, let's be honest, none of us need a quilt. <laughs> We all have plenty. It's kind of funny how when I make a quilt, I can already tell that it's one that I want to keep or one that I don't. I don't know how this microphone is on the camera. I've only used the camera a couple times. I'm going to try to remind Calissa to turn the volume up so that you'll be able to hear me. Oh, that was good. I have windows behind where, um, behind the camera, and the wind I can see is picking up. So I keep hoping for rain. I'm also starting to think about what's going to be for supper. I kind of skidded by on some chips and salsa for lunch, so I should probably make a real supper. Um, that goes back to my tomatoes. Chips and salsa now that I'm... Now that my husband's passed away, lots of times lunch is something very simple like chips and salsa. Okay, it looks like we're getting closer to another block done. That's awesome. Making these from shirts takes longer than if you're going to make the blocks from fabric. If you're making, this required strips that were like 21 inches long or so, and they had to be sewn together and then cut into segments. And when that happened, you needed to have Hi, I'm back here with my quilt. Uh, I think Calissa's going to leave a little clip in of the grandkids here. Things got crazy. I ended up, uh, I didn't have enough memory in my camera. So it seems like I get one problem fixed and I have a new problem. So we're hoping to get an SD card so this doesn't happen again. But I didn't know and then I ended up getting my quilt finished in the meantime. So here it is. What I was telling you last in the video is when you cut this out, this is cut out of shirts. So you're going to cut long segments 
and sometimes you have to end up cutting two different segments because you're using a shirt and so like if the back of the shirt is only this wide you might need something that's this wide so then uh, you might have to cut two segments in order to get the longer width and then you end up with a whole bunch of extra uh, three patch unit segments and that's where these came in and that's what I did for those I used some of those that were left over from making the blocks and I also ended up having to make more especially the orange blue orange segments so that's what it did what i did i want to thank mary from country threads chicken scratch blog she's the person that inspired me to do the quilt in these colors uh she's the one that put the checkerboard on she's the one that did the outer border like this and i just love how the quilt ended up finishing out i'm gonna flip it out maybe you can see the big big effect of it. I'm so happy that I made this quilt. Um, it's been on my bucket list for years and years and now it's at least a top. Yay! So thanks for joining me here on the blog or on the... <laughs> thanks for joining me here on YouTube and you can always check out my blog joescountryjunction.com and if you want to see more con content with me sewing with Joe, uh, you can stop back and hang out with me anytime. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Yeah. Eli, can you turn around and sit down? Yeah. Stand by her. Yeah. Say hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you guys can go play. Hi!